Paddling into a headwind is not a good way to begin a three-day sea kayaking trip. I was with my friend Dean, and we were striking out from Indian Pass, a few miles southwest of the town of Apalachicola, heading east along Florida's forgotten coast. On our right was a Doug Alderson maps paddling trails for the state of Florida and is an author. I wanted to talk to him about the most ambitious trail he's ever mapped. The Florida Circumnavigational Saltwater Paddling Trail is 1,515 miles of uh, the entire Florida coastline. Starts near Pensacola Big Lagoon State Park, goes all the way to Key West, and up, up the East Coast to the Georgia border. Forgotten Coast segment is part of what I call the Old Florida stretch of the trail. You can paddle from about St. Joe Bay down past Crystal River for about 400 miles and find a lot of wild coastline with small towns. And the Forgotten Coast segment probably has some of the highest numbers of public lands that you can stay on. That's the beauty of this stretch. The Forgotten Coast is the fourth of 26 trail segments. It takes five or six days to complete the segment with designated campsites at the end of each day's paddle. You could also choose to paddle part of the segment or take a day trip. We aren't circumnavigating Florida, but we did put our launch our boats in St. Joe Beach. And we did the crossover to the tip of the Cape, which is, oh, less than a mile. It's, it's not, wasn't great. The day we did it was July 11. The heat index was 115, and our trip length was 19 miles. We set out from happy hours with Debbie to get a taste for what their trip was like. Had a lot of nice um, stops along the shoreline. Beautiful shallow grass beds and great fishing holes. We saw a lot of people out fishing. That is a busy time of year. It's also scallop season, so we had people out scalloping. The distances between campsites are such that you have time to enjoy the local flora and fauna along the way. Then you go to the area we call the stump hole, which is where the rocks have been laid to reinforce the road. And you can exit your boat there and portage them to the gulf. That's the thinnest point of the cape in order to cross land. It can be rough in the open ocean. St. Joe Bay itself is somewhat protected, but if you round the point there, it can, you can get some surf. You need to have some experience with surf and waves and swells. And I've been in some uh, pretty big swells. And at first you feel a little bit un unsteady, like, oh boy, what am I in for? Then you realize some of these sea kayaks are pretty stable boats, 16 or 17 feet. So you would then go into the gulf and follow the southern end of the cape down to Indian Pass, and then you take the inside track along St. Vincent Island. I paddled from uh, Indian Pass to St. George Island Bridge and that was a three-day trip, and that was incredible. We camped out twice, uh, one on St. George and one on uh, Cape St. George, and we went along uh, St. Vincent Island and saw tracks of the big sandbar deer, the, uh, the oversized deer that lives on the island, I think originally from India. After a brief lunch, we embarked on a straight five-mile shot across the corner of Apalachicola Bay to our destination on Cape St. George. More wind and waves, Dean and I drifted apart by 100 feet or more, and I was alone with my thoughts in the bay. We went with Doug to St. George Island. There, State Ranger Josh Hodson took us to the park's two paddling trail campsites, Gap Point and Sugar Hill. Doug shared some of the island's history. One thing about the uh, St. George Island and Cape St. George, when you land on these campsites and on the shore, you'll see these older slash pines. They may not be that big, but sometimes they're over 100 years old. And you'll see cat face marks uh, where they used to be uh, tapped for turpentine. And this occurred from the early 1900s through the early 1950s. Paddling on the bay side of St. George, you pass by the Apalachicola Bay Oyster Fishery, a reminder that natural habitats are not just attractive, but productive as well. In addition to providing us with food, the oyster reefs provide several marine species with a home. You can catch your dinner fishing right out from your campsite. You can catch trout and redfish usually and catch enough for dinner. When we get to Sugar Hill, the animals of the bay put on a show for us. A bird catches a blue crab. When I go in for a closer shot, I scare the bird away. It quickly finds a new meal. 
and fish begin to swarm the crab carcass. And then, perhaps attracted by the fish, a shark swims up. Everybody says, well, do you have alligators? Do you have sharks? Do you have snakes? Yes, yes, yes. This is not a backyard swimming pool. And that's why we come here, because we do want to enjoy the marine life. You can see an awful lot of wildlife very quietly from your kayak, which I enjoy doing. I like to see the bird life and the manatees and the dolphins and other animals. And uh, you just never know what you're going to see out there. That's what I like about it. Beginners are advised to start with short day trips before attempting a multiple day trip. Paddlers are also advised to minimize their impact on ecosystems along the trail and to plan thoroughly. The Florida Circumnavigational Saltwater Paddling Trail website has maps, a list of recommended equipment, safety information, and contact information for designated campgrounds along the trail. Visit the URL on your screen for more information. For Dimensions, I'm Rob Diaz de Villegas.